Now let us come to the actual text of Article 10. And like in the previous cases, we are going and like in previous cases, we are also going to look at the India-USA treaty in this case to see who has the right to tax. So dividends paid by a company which is a resident of a contracting state. Okay, so let's say we have an Indian company. So this Indian company is a resident of India. So dividend paid by an Indian company to a resident of the other contracting state. So let's say there is a US resident. So any dividend paid by the Indian company to the US resident and the concept of resident has to be looked at as per article 4 of the other contracting state may be taxed in that other state. What this means is that if an Indian company declares dividend it is not India which has an exclusive right to tax such dividend. Such dividend can also be taxed in US. Right? Now let me just put in how this works in the case of India-US treaty. Practically in case of India, you have two types of dividend which might be there. A dividend which is liable to dividend distribution tax right? and a dividend which is not liable to dividend distribution tax. In case of a dividend on which there is no dividend distribution tax, what we discussed here applies squarely. Right? But in cases where a dividend distribution tax is levied, in that case, this Indian company will pay approximately 20% as dividend distribution tax insofar as the US person is concerned, the US shareholder is concerned for Indian tax purposes. I'm repeating for Indian tax purposes, this income is exempt from tax in the hands of the US resident. But that's only insofar as India is concerned. Now under the treaty, the right to tax dividend is also with US. Right? So when the US shareholder prepares his US tax return, he is going to include the dividend which has been paid in the Indian company in his tax return. Let's say it is dollar hundred. If United States tax such dividend and levies a tax of let's say thirty dollar on this, the issue which comes up is will the dividend distribution tax paid here be deductible from this thirty dollar meaning thereby that will he get a credit of this twenty dollar here or not which means that the cash he has to pay to the US government will be only ten dollars or is it that he has to pay thirty dollars to the US government as tax on dividend and the Indian company pays twenty dollars as dividend distribution tax. There are various views on this particular topic, no square clear thing, right? But in most of the cases, normally the credit for dividend distribution tax is not available. There is a viewpoint, I'm again saying there's a viewpoint, one should seek a professional advice for that matter, that in some cases people do believe that in US you should get a credit for the dividend distribution tax which is paid in India. But of course it is subject to dispute and litigation which one should check with their professional advisors before acting on this. So the right to tax is with both the states. The article 10 paragraph 1 is applicable only when company is a resident of source state and the recipient is a resident of treaty partner country. The word paid is important because what that means is that it is only the dividend for which the funds or the money has been put at the disposal of the shareholder which are going to be taxed. If the dividend are not paid, it has only accrued, no funds have been put at the disposal of the shareholder, the taxation will be deferred until the time this event happens. There's no exclusively right given to either state, right? Which means that it is taxable in both the countries. What this means is that even if the source state, let's say in India, 
dividend were exempt from tax. So the tax was zero, right? In such a case, it will not be a case of double non-taxation because even if India does not levy the tax, since the right to tax is with US, they would apply their taxes. So let's look at some practical examples. If there's an Indian company which pays dividend, okay, the ICO pays dividend to F1, which is a resident of country X, then it will be covered under the India country X treaty. If the Indian company pays dividend to a PE of a foreign company, right? So you have India, the PE is in country Y, right? The PE is of a company F1, which is a resident of country X. The treaty which will be applied in this case will not be India and country Y. It will be India and country X, the treaty where the foreign company is a tax resident of. So if there is a dividend paid by FCO2, which is a resident of third state, so you have Indian company in which 100% is owned by a foreign company, right? The Indian company pays dividend to a foreign company, F1. This will be obviously covered in the treaty like we discussed in the last slide. But if there is any dividend which is declared by FCO2, right? That is not going to be covered by the treaty between India and country X. If there's a dividend which is paid to a PE of a foreign company by the Indian company, right? In such a case, it will be taxable as per the India country X treaty. Country X is the country where the foreign company which has a PE is a tax resident of. Now, if I have to look at the general rule for dividend taxation, okay, I'm not looking at the specifics of the India US treaty for now. The general rule is that if there is a final dividend, which is either declared or distributed or paid by an Indian company, it is treated as the income of the previous year when either the declaration or the distribution or the payment happens, right? If there's an interim dividend, then it is treated as the income of the previous year when unconditionally made available to the member. I mean, interim dividend may be changed, right? Therefore, it is the point when it is unconditionally made available to the shareholder when the taxation of such dividend gets triggered. The Supreme Court has held that the dividend paid does not mean the actual receipt of dividend. Right? What is the meaning of paid? So what is the meaning of paid? How does it fare? Now, normally paid, if it is defined in the treaty, you have to go as per that definition. As per the OECD, paid would typically mean the point when the obligation to put funds at the disposal of the shareholder in the required manner by contract or by customer is fulfilled. So you've kind of given the money to the shareholder. If the treaty does not define, then by application of Article 3.2, which says that terms which are not defined in the treaty has to be looked at as per the domestic tax laws, right? Now, in the domestic tax laws also, the paid word may not necessarily be defined in the context of dividend. But some of the reference which one can look at are that in section 914, it is given that dividend paid shall be deemed to be accrue or in India, right? So if there's a dividend which is paid by an Indian company outside India, it will be deemed to accrue in India. Section 43.2 in a different context says that paid means actually paid or incurred as per the method of accounting. Now whether the credit amounts to payment, again the Supreme Court in the case of Stand and Triumph Motor Company has held that the credit in the books of accounts will amount to receipt by the payee. These are all different things, different context. One should actually look at all these to find out whether or not a particular case is applicable in your case.